In this video, I want to discuss the direct wave plugin and its use. You can think of the direct wave as a more advanced version of the sampler. All the direct wave is, in its most basic form, is a sampler that allows you to map samples to different notes and has some effects capabilities, but the real strength of direct wave lies in its ability to time stretch. The direct wave acts as a keyboard unto its own, and you can add samples to specific keys or regions to create virtual instruments. To start off, you can drag and drop samples from the browser to the direct wave window. When doing this, the sample that you drop in will automatically take up the entire keyboard, and the root note will be set to C5. This means that whatever sample you drop on the keyboard panel will assume that C5 is the root note, and any note you press above or below C5 will be stretched. This alone is a great feature because you can have a single sample and you can create an entire keyboard from that one sample. The downside to this method is that by time stretching, you are affecting the note time. If you have a single sample and you drag it to the screen, you only have one note being played. The time stretching will create notes that are higher or lower, but the timing of the note will be affected because as you stretch into a higher note, the sample rate changes, creating a higher pitch but a shorter time. Conversely, if you click on a lower note, the pitch will be lower, but the time will be longer. The way around this dilemma is to have multiple samples of different notes. If you can get your hands on a sampled instrument, you should have access to samples of each and every note up and down the keyboard. So to use these to their fullest potential, you would need to drag each sample to the keyboard area and then use the handles to create different zones, as well as set the root note for the sample. To set the zone, you can left click here on the little white circles on the top left hand and bottom right hand corner of the highlighted sample zone. Drag these handles until you have only the area you want active to play the sample. You can then set the root note by right clicking the key on the keyboard. The root note determines the starting point for the pitch shift. If you have a set of samples that encompass 128 notes, you can then set each note to its own region and root note to create a literal virtual instrument. But what if you don't have 128 notes of samples? Don't worry. If you only use one note per octave, you can still effectively use direct wave. Just load each sample and set its regions for the entire octave, then set your root note. For instance, if I have a set of samples that were in the D key and I have 11 octaves worth of samples, effectively 11 samples, I could load each D key sample from lowest to highest onto the screen and then adjust so that the lowest D encompass the lowest octave and the next highest encompass the next and so on and so forth and then I would make sure that my root note was D for each region. This way, although I only had the D sampled, Direct Wave would only be stretching each sample through one octave, so the timing would not be as off as using one sampled note for the entire keyboard. Now you can use the Download Manager to download plenty of free content for the Direct Wave already set up and mapped out to give a convincing live appeal. Remember, time stretching is powerful, but the drawback is that the note only stretches the pitch, but not the note time. The more sampled notes you have, the better you can work with Direct Wave. You can also determine velocity, similar to the FPC. In Direct Wave, you can drag the handles on the note region up or down to create velocity edits, just like in the FPC. Let's say you have piano samples of D, and you have them at varying velocities from soft to loud. You could place each one on the same note and the same root note, and then change the velocity for each, so that when you press a key softly on your keyboard, it will sound softly through the output but only because you're triggering the soft note sample. As you press harder, you would be triggering louder samples. This again gives us the ability to literally create virtual instruments using only samples. My advice again for the direct wave is to get a hold of some very detailed sample sets. The more data, the more notes, the more velocity of each note, the better and more convincing you can make your virtual instrument. Now, as mentioned, you can create a sampled instrument using only a one-note sample, but the time stretching will create a problem the further you get from the root note. Now, you can also edit the parameters of a sample and its zone in the sample list. Here, we have information regarding the sample title, its size, its sample rate, mute, which acts as the cut group function discussed in earlier videos, 
the root note for the sample, the course and fine tuning settings, keyboard tracking settings, how many ticks the note will sound for, the SY setting, which refers to the beat sync mode, which will adjust the playback of the note to match the main tempo, and SL, which is slice mode, and will slice the sample based on the amount of ticks you have set. This will place the slices on the next notes going up the keyboard so that you can trigger them using multiple notes. Ticks correspond to beats. Four ticks equals one musical beat. The low key and high key determine your range on the keyboard at which your notes can sound, and you can also adjust the velocity settings from low and high as well. Finally, we can lock and unlock the zone by checking the lock box, and we also have a display of the voice count based on the sample. So we now see there are two ways to change our sample zones around. One is to click and drag the control point handles on the screen, as well as manually enter the information in the sample list. Now if you right click on the zone window, we have some menu items which will allow you to create, delete, and duplicate zones, as well as add and replace samples. Auto map samples will attempt to automatically map the samples on the keyboard based on if the samples have embedded name and loop information in them. You can also select Remap as Drum Kit, which will remap the samples in consecutive order. We can lock and unlock all zones, and finally, you can use Direct Wave to determine the root pitch of a sample. You want to keep your root note as close to the original sample's root as possible in order to get the best time stretching. And since I just mentioned it, I want to point out that Direct Wave can also be used for many purposes, not just for creating virtual instruments from samples. Essentially, all Direct Wave is doing is allowing you to trigger samples using a keyboard, so you can place different samples on different keys and use your keyboard to trigger them. So you can make drum kits, load sliced beats, or any other sample and trigger it using Direct Wave. Again, this is much like the fruity pad controller, which we discussed in an earlier video, in that you're simply triggering different sounds from a controller, in this case, a keyboard. The difference between the Direct Wave and the FPC is that you're triggering many more samples, as well as being given the opportunity to stretch samples according to the root note you set on the keyboard. The main differences between the Direct Wave and the Sampler is that while you can load a sample in the Sampler and play it up and down the keyboard, the Direct Wave allows you to load many different samples, set different root notes for each, and then layer sounds according to velocities all in one interface. You also have the option to add onboard effects, which we'll discuss now. By left-clicking on the Program tab below the Zone window, you can add effects such as Delay, Reverb, and Chorus, as well as two different types of Drive and two separate LFO effects. The Master Panel lets us choose between Poly, Mono, and Legato settings. These determine whether you can play more than one note at one time. The Glide Panel will give you options to slur the attack of notes, in a sense, blending notes as you play. You can also adjust the time setting to determine the length of the slide between notes, but if you choose Fixed, this will have no effect, as all of the notes will slide into each other. The Auto setting will make any overlapping notes automatically portamento. Now, these controls that we've just discussed affect the entire program, or instrument. This means that they will affect all of the samples you play in the current Direct Wave program, but we can also add effects and changes to single samples or zones. To do this, we can click on the Zone tab to view options for the currently selected zone. Here, you see we have Volume, Panning, Pitch, and Post Gain. We also have two different filters and an ASDR envelope, two LFOs, and a modulation matrix. The modulation matrix allows you to use one effect to modulate another. We also have effects at the bottom such as ring modulation, a decimator, and a quantizer, which give a low bit rate type of effect, a phaser, and send effects from the master delay, reverb, and chorus. Finally, the automation panel lets you decide if the current settings will apply globally or just to the current zone. One last thing to mention is that we can click on Time beside the main Control tab to see some time stretching options. When Time is checked, the zone will be played using FL Studio's time stretching system. When Sync is selected, the zone will be expressed in ticks. The amount tells us the time stretching length expressed as a percent or as ticks with Beat Sync enabled. The grain setting is the amount of time for each grain. 
When you time stretch a sample, it is stretched into many tiny little pieces which are called grains. The length of the grain can affect the sound. Finally, smoothing will smooth out the transitions between grains. The type option is not in use at this point in time by FL Studio. We also have some editing options for the samples by left clicking on the sample tab. This will bring up an image of the waveform. You can zoom in and out by left clicking on the plus and minus signs in the bottom left hand and right hand corners of the screen and then using the scroll bar to move left and right. You can also zoom by left clicking on the scroll bar and moving the mouse up and down. The start control determines where the playback will begin in the sample. You can move the knob or left click and move the red bar to the appropriate place. The loop setting determines the area you would like to loop if you so desire. The loop start and loop end represent the points in which the sample will loop. The way it works is this. The sample will start playback from the start point. It will cross the loop start point and when it hits the loop end point, it will not go back to the sample start point but will begin playback again at the loop start point and continue to loop as long as you hold down the key. The point of this is if you have a sample that lasts for a short time and you want to be able to play it out longer. So you can set loop points in the middle of the sample so that even though the actual sample is short, the playback will be long. This is sometimes difficult to do because you need to have the loop points set on the same amplitude. What I mean is that you need to have the points set so that the waveform is at the same height. If you have one point set when the waveform is high and the other point set when it is low, you may get an audible click when the loop occurs. To remedy this, you should find points in the waveform where the lines are at the same height or amplitude. Another thing to watch out for is timing. You will need to find a point within the sample which has repetitive troughs and crests, or ups and downs. Set your loop points so that the loop sounds natural and not like a CD skipping. Finally, you can right click on the sample panel to choose Set Optimal Loop. This will attempt to find points within the sample to loop for you. You can also choose different looping methods such as forward, one shot, sustained, and bounce. You can also record into direct wave by using it as an insert effect and placing it on a mixer track and then pressing record. Recording into direct wave will begin when audio is detected. To record samples into direct wave, you need to have the monitor setting activated and this will allow you to hear what is being played into direct wave. If using DirectWave as a sample player, you do not have to have this set. Now DirectWave also includes a 440 Hz test tone for tuning your samples. Lastly, again, we have a context menu that can be accessed by right-clicking the window. The menu contains options for zoom, cut, copy, paste, and trim, setting the start and end loop points, set optimal loop, as well as fade in and fade out, normalize, reverse, and save options. You can also switch to spectral display here. The last thing to point out on the direct wave sampler is the library menu. You can left click on the library tab to view any instruments that you have made or downloaded. You can double click to load a program or you can left click the arrow icon to import from another sampler's format such as battery or contact. So we've seen how the direct wave sampler offers a very flexible and powerful set of sampling tools as well as some really cool effects and editing functions. You can make your programs as complex or as simple as you'd like, and you can always save your work and return later to edit. To save, you can right-click to open the context menu in the Program Zone window. This is also where you can save and load programs, as well as flush all. One note about saving. When you save, your file will be saved as a DWP file. This is only the file and not the samples themselves. You can load the file even if you don't have the samples and all data in the direct wave will appear, but if the samples are missing, no sound will be generated. When you save the file, a subdirectory will automatically be created in the folder that you save to that will contain the samples. Remember, if you want to share your creation with someone else, you will need to create a zip file or comparable alternative with both the file and the samples folder in it. You can also use the total recall function to do this. We need to open up the Options menu to view the Total Recall setting. By turning Total Recall on, we can then save the program as an FXP or FXB file. The downside to this option is that the file that you create will be as large as the sample data. Once Total Recall is on, you can save your file from the Plugin Wrapper menu.
This would be the same place that you could load from. The other options that we have here are where you can set your default directories as well as options to turn on high quality 64 point sync, set multi timbral mode which will allow DirectWave to respond independently on all 16 MIDI channels. The file browser option will turn on the integrated file browser in DirectWave which can also be accessed by left clicking on the little arrow icon on the right side of the plugin window as well as an option to normalize all WAV files. The Extract Root Key from File Name is an option which will attempt to determine the root from the file name of the sample. We also have an option for pitch identification for samples and compatible velocity, which allows older files to play from previous versions. This option isn't needed for current projects. Another cool option is that you can choose to host VST instruments for sampling in the direct wave and then select a program or preset to sample. We also have options for lowest and highest key to sample, number of keys to step in between samples, number of velocity layers per sample, as well as the number of programs to render. You can change the duration of each sample and finally press process to begin sampling. This is a great tool because it allows you to take a VSTI, which may be CPU intensive, and sample it so that you can use it in direct wave. So all in all, the Direct Wave Sampler goes above and beyond, offering us the ability to completely control our sample playing and editing, as well as offering us the ability to sample from VSTIs and external hardware. This powerful tool can be used to emulate real instruments, replicate classic hardware, or for any sampling purpose. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.